So I tell these young people usually when they ask for, for some kind of guidance as to whether they should go into culinary field or not, I always say, only go into it if you can't not do it. To me, that's that, that was what I faced. I all of a sudden woke up one day and said, I have to do this thing. This is who I am. I have to do it. And I, I plowed through it, went to Mexico, lived there for five years, uh, wrote my first book. Really, there was no, there's no culinary school. There's still hardly any culinary schools in Mexico that just teach Mexican food. Most of them teach international, just like here. But I, I, so I had to, to create my own education. I, had to, I went to every single state in the Mexican Republic. I cooked with local cooks. I, I went into the markets and actually documented everything I found in the markets. Uh, street food, every street food I found, I took pictures of and documented and all that sort of stuff. And out of that came my first book. But that, it was, be I did it because I had to do it, not because it was a cool thing to do, because back then it wasn't a cool thing. When I told my mother that I was going to not finish my PhD and instead um, to go and write a cookbook in Mexico, you can well, you know what happened with that. It's like no parent wants to hear that, and yet I had this vision of what I could do. A long time ago, I asked the question, is food an art form or just a craft? And basically for me, that comes down to an understanding of art can really move you emotionally. A craft you really appreciate, but it doesn't necessarily move you in the same way as art does. So I've been asking the question, is food and art for a long time? Because I wonder how it can touch our emotions. So we, we look at food in two ways, really. One is about memory that it evokes. And that can create a lot of emotion. But it's not the food that's doing it, it's the memory that is doing it. So then I say if you take memory out of the, the equation, can the food itself evoke an emotion in you? And one dish that was sent to us was lardo, so cured fat back basically, um, then very thinly sliced with herbs and flowers on it. And you just cut it up, put it on, smeared it on some bread, and ate it. And my wife sat there and wept through the whole thing. I was laughed because it was fat and flowers that did it. <laughs> so, but she sat there and just tears ran down her, her cheeks. And she said it was the most exquisite thing she had ever eaten. Every bit of it was just perfect. And the way that the, the fat melted on the tongue, the way that each flower had its distinct flavor, each herb had its distinct flavor, just created this such a perfect harmony for her that she sat there with, the, with tears running down her, her face in the same way that sometimes I have seen her sit in front of a painting in a museum and weep. She weeps pretty easily. <laughs> I, so I thought, maybe food can do that. I don't think we often open ourselves up to it. We certainly don't have vocabulary to describe it yet. But I think any chef, especially any really good chef, can tell you the moment that they ate that meal that, said, that, that convinced them that this is what I'm going to do for my life. And it's because whatever they ate touched them emotionally in such a deep way that that was fuel to go through the rest of their lives trying to create that same moment for other people, their guests in the restaurant. So I think it can. <laughs> I, I think it can, but again, we're sort of new at describing how this would be. And certainly we can appreciate the craft, the beauty of the way that dishes go together. We love thinking about food. Um, okay, so there's this, I, I call it the, the amusement park approach to, to doing food. Um, really great chefs can amuse us in that way. Think about when you're on a roller coaster and it just crusts that peak 
and you start going down and you get that rush, that thrill, that's pretty easy to do in food. You can create a dish that looks like one thing and tastes like another. That's thrilling. That's the unexpected turn that is that sort of amusement park approach to things. That I'm sure we can do with food. But the other thing that I was describing before is a much deeper emotional kind of relationship to the food. Now, I don't think in our country right now that we pay enough attention to even really explore that very much because um, we have, we, well, first of all, we disconnected with the source of our food a number of generations ago, um, and now we're trying to reconnect to it. So first we've got to reconnect to it. Then we've got to be able to really appreciate the flavor of real food. And I have to say, anytime you eat processed food, you're really messing with your taste buds because they are designed to do certain things on your taste buds that natural food does not do. So we get clouded in our perception. I mean, probably all of you have been had an experience of having somebody eat fresh blueberries and say, well, these don't taste like blueberries. And he said, no, no, this is what blueberries taste like. <laughs> and they said, no, but you meant the Captain Crunch blueberry flavor tastes so <laughs> completely different than that, you know? That, that artificial flavor that people have been weaned on. I taught a cooking class one time that was a small, uh, in my early, another life when I was just getting started, I used to teach a lot of participation cooking classes in my own apartment. Um, and I would have uh, six people come and we would make dinner basically and I would talk them through all the dishes. And one guy couldn't come one time, so he sent a friend of his. And so I, I made some whipped cream to go with this dessert that I was making. And the, the, this honestly was uttered. The guy said, wow, this tastes almost as good as Cool Whip. <laughs> so he, he had never tasted whipped cream before, and his benchmark was Cool Whip. <laughs> it's probably not so bad for you that you couldn't afford to buy Cool Whip. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of work, too. I had to eat it. <laughs> stuff. It's like, why would you do that? So, so we, we, have a, we have a long way to go to really be able to answer whether food is an art because we have to be, as a culture, we have to come to a deeper appreciation for it, develop language for it, pay more attention to what we're eating. I can't believe how many people in, I see in our restaurant that just, they, they're in a conversation and they've consumed an entire plate of food without ever paying attention to what was in front of them. And I mean, I love chatting at the table because I, I think that food is the most communal, communal thing. I was just talking to Jenny at Jenny's Ice Cream about uh, how food builds community. And we do that as the nucleus of, of, as all chefs do that, as the nucleus of what we do because anytime you bring two people together to share a meal, you're creating community. So we're, we're doing that kind of thing, which I think is super important. But we have, to, we have to be able to make the food part of that conversation, too, so that as we're talking at the table, we're talking about the nuances of flavor, the, the, the balance of textures, whatever it is, that all of that becomes part of our vocabulary. And then maybe we can ask that question.